Hi, my name is Todd Johnson, Executive Director of YMCA Youth Sports. Welcome to the Spring 2021 Micro and Recreational Volleyball Coaches Meeting. First of all, thank you for coaching this spring. This is going to be a great spring of volleyball. After not being able to play last spring, the kids are really looking forward to it and we really appreciate you giving up your time this spring to help the community in Lincoln. Just a little bit about the YMCA Youth Sports Branch. Our office is located at 570 Fallbrook Boulevard and we are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We can be reached at 402-434-9217 and our website is ymcalincoln.org. If you ever have questions, concerns, or need anything from us, please give us a call or check out our website. We will post all the schedules, rules, and the guidelines and policies for the spring season on our website as well. And then you will also find information on upcoming programs at our, on our website. For spring 2021, guidelines and restrictions, everybody just like in the fall or winter, if you participate in YMCA youth sports, indoor sports, we will need an LPS facility waiver form from each participant. If they played in the fall or winter basketball, we would that have that on file. But anybody new to an indoor sport since fall of 2020, we would need a new waiver. And we will have waivers we will hand out when you sign up for our practice time. As well, we can always email it to families that would need that waiver. Face masks, just like in the fall season and anywhere indoor in Lincoln, face masks are required. Um, for all parents and coaches and for players when they're not actively competing in the match or in a scrimmage in practice. We highly recommend that players wear a face mask at all times, but if they would need to take it off while they're participating in the game, that would be fine. They would just need to put the mask on as soon as they came out of the activity. Practice guidelines, just like in the fall, we are limited at LPS to two coaches per team and then one adult spectator can attend practice with the child and everybody at practice would need a mask on. All adults, all players, unless they're actively in a scrimmage, otherwise anytime you're doing drills or anything else in practice, uh, the players would need a mask on. Game day guidelines, the game day guidelines would be Everybody needs a mask. We are currently, the current guidelines do have us limited once again at LPS facilities to one spectator per participant. And we do ask the spectator enter the gym with the participant. That way we know who's with who. And then everybody would social distance from there. Like in the fall, we won't have team benches. We would just have you spread your kids out on the sidelines, the ones that are not in, or in the younger age groups, if you are on the baseline waiting to come in, just keep the six foot distance the best you can at practice as well as in the games. If any of these guidelines would change, we will sure update you as conditions in the community warrant. And, uh, League game practice and policy sheet can also be found on our website and we have also emailed that out to you and also all the participants, families participating this spring. Now on to the program. What are some of the program goals we would like you to think about as this season goes on? One of the keys to our program is building kids self-esteem. The number one thing would be to make sure everybody's having fun and that includes you. I hope as a coach you have fun while you're trying to coach the youth in our community and you enjoy it. I hope you just don't kind of get every season, please will you coach, please will you coach. I hope it's something you enjoy. I know as somebody who coaches both of my children, it's probably the funnest uh, two, week, two hours of the week for me is to be out there and coaching their teams and participating with them and I hope that is for you also. And then we also want to support and strengthen their family life and it's really important to try to build relationships for the kids. Some of your teammates will know each other 
from school. Some may have been on your team in the prior, but there's maybe some kids that have never been on your team and don't know anybody. So one of the key things is trying to get them to feel as part of a team and building that relationship between you and the other players on your team. So everybody can have a great experience. And then at the Y, we'd like you to work on character development. Honesty, caring, respect, and responsibility. How can we have those as part of our program and putting them in practice in games? Area of focus. Three things we focus on at the Y is youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. And as a coach, how can you also kind of talk to kids, not only is it important now to be healthy at, at your volleyball practice, but how do you take that outside of the volleyball and of sports? So coach pickup. The materials you have picked up will include a roster, a schedule, and any t-shirts that were ordered by your players. If a player for some reason ordered the wrong size t-shirt, they can sure exchange that at our youth sports office. And then before you would hand anything out, please take inventory. Um, if you are going to get names in the back or numbers on the back, some coaches will. The one thing I would uh, suggest is make sure everybody has the right size before you put the name and number on the back. Unfortunately, sometimes you'll put a name on there and they need to exchange it. And if there's a name on there, we would have to charge them for a new t-shirt because we wouldn't be able to use it again. Equipment. If you are in first grade micro volleyball, all of the equipment you will need will be at your site. So for first grade micro volleyball, we will have two volley lights, the net will be set up, and there will be some cones for your practice before you play the game. For recreational volleyball, you can sure check out two volleyballs from the youth sports office anytime Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. We do require a deposit just to ensure we can get the ball back. Um, nets and other equipment will be available for you at your practice site. Different school facilities will have different standards and, and time commitments. Some will have all the equipment set up for you. Some schools may just have the equipment out or a closet accessible for you to set up the volleyball equipment. If you have any questions, you get there the first night and you're not sure if you set it up right, please give me a call the next day and we can walk through it and maybe even see if the school can help you the next time if you had any issues the night before. And then as always with all YMCA youth sports activities, jewelry and watches need to be removed um, prior to the game and practice. Online information, as I said, includes schedules, rules, maps of playing site, um, gu guidelines and policies. So if you ever need anything or a parent needs it, has questions, please see our website for, to answer those. So what do you do next? We suggest as soon as you get your roster and information and you know your practice, contact your team members. Send out an email. Let the parents know what your guidelines are. What do you expect for the season? And then um, when your practice time is. Let them know what's the best way to contact you if they have questions. Is it a cell phone? Do you prefer email? Do you prefer text? Any kind of communication lines you can open up with parents and let them know how you would like to be communicated with. That could include a preseason meeting, could be a Zoom meeting, could be a quick conference call, or just a text or an email that you would like to send out to your team welcoming them to your squad this spring. Late registrations. We still are taking some late registrations for volleyball. If we would get a player that uh, we feel might fit on your team, we will contact you to see if you're okay with that and if we can add another player. And if we would add them, we would send them directly a shirt. So you wouldn't have to worry coming out to get their shirt, we'll send it to them. Or if we don't have enough time before your first game, we would uh, take it to the game for them. Practice locations. For first grade micro volleyball, practice and game will be in the same hour, all at Nickel Middle School. So you will practice for 25 minutes and play a 25 minute game. As I stated earlier, all equipment will be provided at the site for micro volleyball. Recreational volleyball, each team will get one one hour practice time that will begin on Monday, March 29th at an LPS school. 
If you've already signed up for your practice time, you should be good to go. If you have any questions about your practice time or need to reschedule a practice time for a week, please let us know in the office. If you have not signed up for a practice time yet, please give us a call and we will get you lined up with a practice time. Game locations for YMCA Recreational Volleyball, we will use various Lincoln Public School sites. We do have to follow all the guidelines for Lincoln Public Schools that are COVID related and non-COVID related, which would be their smoke-free, tobacco-free, and alcohol-free and all their activities. And then with the COVID, we'd have one spectator per participant and everybody would need to have a mask on indoor. And please observe any parking out in the parking lot. We don't want anybody to come to a game and leave the game and their car's no longer there. So please observe all those restrictions outside. Expectations of the coach. Number one, you are a role model. So you're a role model for everybody on your team as well as all the parents on your team. So remember that you're setting an example for everybody as the leader of the team. You should be there to teach the skills and knowledge of the game to the kids. This could be individual skills as well as how you scrimmage and how you play as a team together. Please incorporate both of those skill levels. Provide a fun, low-key environment, and as I said earlier, promote friendships and family togetherness. And then we have concussion information on our website. Please familiarize yourself in, the e in this email we sent out with this video. We'll have links for the concussions. This will, and just in case something were happen in volleyball, if the ball hits somebody in the head or they fall on the floor, you're kind of familiar with the guidelines and what you should do to help the child the best you can. And then we'll talk real briefly about volleyball rules. Included in your packet was a rule sheet and also on our website. I will start with micro volleyball. Micro volleyball in the match will play four on four. The court will be about 15 by 30 feet and the net height will be six feet. Micro volleyball will play with a volley light and they will play a 25 minute game. For micro volleyball, the coaches will also officiate micro volleyball. You, you'll play six games starting April 11th. Rotation, so you'll serve and then you'll always rotate in your new players in the middle back position after a child has served. That's how we'll rotate for micro volleyball. Scoring will not be kept. Teams will change sides approximately at 12 minutes. And then each team can serve three times in a row. So if you score three points in a row, you will just have an automatic side out and the other team will rotate and serve. Service can be underhand or overhand. And then everyone will get two chances on their first serve of the rotation. So the first serve I take, if I hit the net, I can get another chance on that first serve. If that one goes over, and then my second point I'm serving goes into the net, we would rotate to the other team. During play, as the ball crosses the net, the first ball can be caught in micro volleyball. So what we want to try to teach them, if you're going to have your team catch the first ball, they would have to have a teammate then hit it over the net. You would want to get them in position and have them catch it below their waist, just like if you were going to pass the ball with a traditional bump in volleyball, this way we're just going to catch it and then where they can control it a little better, an underhand toss it to a teammate who then needs to make a volleyball play to have the ball over the net for second grade. And you can review the rest of the rules on our website and in our video, or in the, on our website or in the email that we sent out. For recreational volleyball, Grades two through four will play on a slightly smaller court. It'll be 30, 30 by 40, and we will try to have a line that designates or we will have cones out to designate where your out of bounds line is. S fifth grade through ninth grade will be on a regulation volleyball court. 
For the ball, second through sixth grade, we'll use a volley light. Seven, eight, nine, we'll use a regular volleyball. Net height for second through fourth grade is approximately six foot six. Fifth and sixth grade will be seven foot. And then seventh through ninth grade will be a regulation net height. All players will play with six on the court. Matches for recreational volleyball are 50 minutes. As many games to 25 as you can get in in 50 minute time limit. We will once again have a score clock that will start, a time clock that will start at 50 minutes and once that 50 minutes is up, your match will be completed. We will use rally score. So every time we have a point and then this year we probably will not switch sides after each game, we'll just take a quick break and then just keep everybody on the same side of court. So the rotation of players, second through fifth grade, will do the same thing as we did in micro volleyball. You will rotate in the middle back position, in the center back position. So each new player you're going to bring in, once somebody serve, we rotate again after the other team's point in our serve again. The center back, the person who just served, will come out, and a new person will rotate in for second through fifth grade. For 6th through ninth grade, you have the option of rotating in the service back, center back position, or you can let the official know when you, when you want to sub. Just keep in mind, all players should be playing half the match. So whichever way you rotate in and serve, that would be half the match. And then automatic side out, grades 2 through 5, we will rotate after 3 straight points. 6 through 9, we will rotate 5 straight points. So if you score 5 points, we'll have an automatic side out and the other team will serve. On an automatic side out, you do not get a point, you just get to serve the ball. Serving, the player rally begins with the serve and they can serve underhand or overhand. Grades 2 through 4, we will be 3 foot in and then they will also get two chances to get their first serve of their rotation over the net. So just like micro volleyball in grades two through four, you would get two chances to get the ball over the net. Five through six will be three foot in on the serving line. And then um, each server is allowed one attempt on the first serve just like regular volleyball for 5th through 6th, and 7th through nine, they'll just hit from the end line on their service. Receiving the ball, the maximum is three contacts um, for everybody. The ball may go over the net on the first ball, but we highly stress for you to try to have your team set the ball to another player. So try to pass to another player, set it, and see how many times, challenge your team, and I challenge you to see how many times that your team can get two or three contacts before the ball goes over the net. So instead of just trying to get the ball over the net, try to develop and see by the end of the year, maybe half our rallies are two or three at the beginning of the year, and by the end of the year, 90% of our rallies that we're getting the ball over in two or three hits instead of just getting the ball over right away as quick as we can. And then you can sure check blocking um, does not count as a team contact, but you would be able to block and net fouls. And then we, the officials will try their best to uh, officiate and be a maybe a little uh, liberal at the beginning of the year on some of those illegal hits with warnings, but as the year goes on, we hope the skill level will improve too from your coaching, which would help kind of any kind of illegal hits or anything. If you have any questions on rules, suggestions or anything, please let us know. Once again, thank you for coaching this spring. We hope you have a wonderful season and good luck.